um, in the School of Design and Construction. So we're going to try to go over what the requirements are to um, get admission to your major. Okay, so it's so when you're first admitted to WSU, you give us your interest or your academic interest in the major in our college. So that could be interior design, it could be landscape architecture, it could be architecture or construction management. Um, you haven't been admitted to the program yet. You're just working on the pre-professional courses for your individual major. I know I've had some questions, um, emails about students thinking that, you know, they're in one area of interest right now and they want to go into, say, architecture or they want to change to interior design. You can make up your mind right when you apply or um, apply for the major in the spring. So you don't have to make your decision until that point because all the requirements for the design majors are exactly the same, okay? Um, so all of the programs are structured so that you have your first year, which is this your freshman year, is your pre-professional program. After this year, once you get into the program, then you're considered to be in the professional program. Um, and then applications will notify everyone in the spring once applications are open. And really what that is doing it is it's telling us I'm interested in this major, I've completed all the requirements, and I'm ready to go. Um, so that's what we're looking for. Um, for the admission to the major, the students must complete the pre-professional courses. So that is the eight courses for the design majors and the 10 courses for construction management. And you have to complete those prior or by the end of spring semester. You can't take courses over the summer. You have to have everything ready to go by the end of spring term. You have to have a C or better in all eight of your courses or 10 of your courses. And your GPA must be a 3.3 or higher. And that is just for that guaranteed or automatic into the second year. If you don't meet that admission major criteria, you'll be considered for enrollment until we reach the enrollment limit for each of those majors. Um, and so there's a different enrollment um, cap on each of those majors. But don't, don't get depressed if you don't have a 3-3 because possibly you're still gonna get in the major if there's seats available, okay? So, be, so to be considered for the major in architecture, interior design, or landscape architecture, you have to complete these eight courses. You have to have COM 102, um, English 101, Fine Arts either 101, 201, or 202, History 105, Psych 105, or SOCH 101, SDC 100, SDC 120, and SDC 140. So 100, most of you right now are in 100 and 120. You won't take 140 until next semester. So to be considered for admission into construction management, you have to complete these 10 courses. So again, grade of C or better in the 10 courses, and then your overall GPA has to be a 3-3. So again, COM 10T, which is your basic public speaking class, English 101, SDC 100, which is an introduction to the world of design and construction, History 105, Econ 101, or Econ 101, not and, yeah, it's and, not or, sorry, you gotta have them both, Econ 101 and 102, either a humanities or a diversity, um, SOE 101, or geology is what it is, math 171, which is calculus, and then construction management 102, okay? Any questions so far? Anybody? Okay, all right. So 
Here's where it tells you um, the typical enrollment limits to get into that second year. Um, so again, we go over that completion of the pre-professional coursework. So even if you've completed it all, it doesn't guarantee that you'll get acceptance into the professional program. And that's due to enrollment limits. So on the application, we will ask you um, what maybe would be your second choice and maybe even your third choice. And then if you feel like um, next semester, at the end of the semester, you're just struggling and you just don't know, I, you need to talk to Treva and I so we can work out maybe a secondary or a backup plan. Um, we can figure out your GPA at the, at the end of this term. So we'll work with you to help you um, determine what major might be better for you or maybe an alternative to the one that you have chosen. So typical enrollments in architecture are 45 students we accept. The average GPA in last spring was a 3.5. Construction management, they take 50 students and the average GPA was a 3.42. And then in interior design, they take 30 and the average GPA was a 3.26. And then in landscape architecture, they take 25 and the average GPA was a 3.0. So I'm just gonna mention this. Um, we will, we're recording this presentation so that you can go to YouTube and look at it again if you need some more information or couldn't, can't remember something we talked about. But all of these four-year plans are linked. And you can find, click on those and it'll take you directly to your four-year plan for your major. They're also on our website, so you can also get them there too. So, um, how to navigate the student homepage. Now, how many of you are pretty, feel pretty comfortable with working in my WSU? Quite a few of you? Great. Okay, so, Oh, good job. Okay, so um, the first thing you want to do is once you get there to your um, home page is the Manage Classes tab is where you're going to go to register for your classes. Um, your Academic Records is where you're going to actually be able to view your academic plan. And then TAS is really important because that's going to list your holds that you currently have that will keep you from registration, okay? So before you even think about registering for classes, make sure that you've checked your tasks um, tile because you could have holds on there. Your advising hold will be removed by Treva and I. That's the only hold that Treva and I can remove. So if you have a hold for your measles or for green dot or, a, um, let's see, um, a financial hold of some sort, we can't, we can't do anything for you, unfortunately. Those are holds that we can't remove. So the only hold we can remove is an advising hold. So to view your academic progress report, um, this is important for you to start looking at because this is going to help you um, see what requirements you've completed and what you haven't completed. So you want to go to your MyWSU again. I'm going to go back to, and you're going to want to click on that academic records. It says academic advising. Did I? It's actually, Treva, did that change? You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, what, what academic? Oh, because the tab is academic records, but then if you look at the slide, it says select academic advising. Oh, yes, it has, because it used to be academic advising. I haven't looked that close at my title. Well, the, the slide that had the academic uh, records is old. It may be. Mm -hmm. I was um, anyway, it'll say academic records or academic advising. Sorry about that. Anyway, then you want to se select academic progress. And if you have your computer and you can do this now, that's great. 
And then you want to view your report. And it's best to view it as a PDF because it's much easier to read. And you have to, pop-ups must be allowed. And then you want to look at your academic progress report. And you'll notice that anything that's not satisfied will show in red, not satisfied. So again, this is going over the same thing. It says select academic advising. I think that's what the actual tile says now. It is academic advising. Academic advising and student academic records are two different tiles. Yeah, okay. So you definitely want to select academic advising. And you can see where it says academic progress. You would click there. Then you would view it as a PDF there. And then this is a great, way to read it and you can see where it's in red where it says not satisfied where you haven't met that requirement keep in mind that where it says units completed it's only going to put the units that you've completed that you have an actual grade in your current courses will not be included in um, the completed courses because you haven't received a grade yet, you haven't completed them. Next um, is where to look for your enrollment dates. So enrollment dates, um, this class schedule will be coming out around October, or it's supposed to be out October 15th. Um, my guess is that enrollment dates will come out shortly after that. So this is where in your, um, my WSU, where you're going to want to go and look to see when your exact day is for you. It'll give you your date and time that you can start registering for classes. Um, so you want to look, and it's on the left-hand side, and it's under Enrollment Dates. And, you know, I probably should go back because I believe that that the way you're going to find your enrollment dates is under manage classes. So you'd want to click on that first and then on the left hand side, it'll list your enrollment dates. So the next slides that we're going to go over, you want to click that first manage classes tile and then you'll see all this. Here you can actually search for your classes on the class search and enroll and it'll bring up um, classes that you want to add for spring semester. Um, there's other ways that you can search classes and later on or farther along in the presentation we're going to show you how to look at classes at, at the class schedule. And when I spoke about the class schedule coming out on October 15th, that's kind of the schedule that advisors always use. We rarely use the um, class search and enroll on your MyWSU because it, for us, it just is, it's harder sometimes for us because we don't use it as much. We use the class schedule, but we'll go over both so that you can see it. Um, so the what, important things to remember when you're looking for courses is that, that before you start to search, you want to make sure that you select the correct term. So if it's fall, you would click on fall. If it's spring, you would definitely want to click on spring to search for classes. Because if you go to the other, other um, I've had students go to the other semesters and then they'll enter the class number and then what happens is they get a message that says this course um, is outside your academic interest or it, it gives you a warning that you can't register for it. And it's just because you've picked the wrong um, semester. Here's where using the class schedule, this is where we talk about that. So this is, if you want to use this class schedule, it'll be available April 15th. And we'll, um, we should be able to show you, I don't know if that one's highlighted or not. No, um, I think what I'm gonna do is- It'll be available on October 15th. Yeah, so um, do many of you know how to use the class schedule? Not the one on my WSU, but the one if you look it up online through 
WSU their main page? I see some people shaking their head yes. Um, that's a great way to look at those. It's just a quick uh, list of things. So that's, that's when we're referring to the class schedule. That's what that is. Treva, do you want to go from here? I sure can. Okay. You just tell me when you want me to change screens, okay? Okay. And the schedule of classes is the same on the WSU website as it is in my WSU. It's just a different format. Mm -hmm. Here you'll see the instruction modes for spring. So when you are looking at the schedule of classes and you're wondering, is it going to be a web class or is it going to be an in-person class or um, asynchronous, synchronous? The synchronous classes are 100% online via Zoom, Blackboard, Canvas, all those technologies. But the time and day are required and these courses must be taught during the listed times. The in-person or face-to-face -face options for spring at this point, they're looking for classes with um, less than 10 people. So it pretty, it's going to be limited how many place classes can be face-to-face, -face. but watch for information on October 15th when all that information will be released, <clears throat> excuse me, with the schedule of classes. So when you're doing the class search and enroll under your manage classes tile, you can do it several different ways. You can use the course number if you've looked at the schedule of classes on the MyWSU webpage and you actually have the number, you can just type that in. Or you can actually type in the subject such as interior design and it will bring up all the interior design classes or you can do the interior design plus the class or the topic. I don't search by topic very often, but that is one of the options. Once you bring up all of the classes, you can choose one of the classes, um, select the course that you're bringing up to find the available section. Make sure you're selecting a course that's on the Pullman campus because it will search and for all of the campuses and you only are allowed to enroll in Pullman campus courses. So once you find one of the courses, just select that course, you can click on it in any area that's black text and it will bring up the information for that course, such as if it's a this particular course, ANTH 101, is a diversity, so it will fulfill your diversity U core. It has the lecture times and also the meeting dates and the days of the week that it will meet and how many seats are open in that class, say 40 of 90 seats are open. Then you'll see that there's a next button in the upper right hand corner there and you'll, once you decide which one of those classes, you would select next. And here's where it will ask you if you want to be put on a wait list. Say there were um, no seats available in that class, but it really works with your time. Select the wait list option and then put select. This will put you on a wait list. And if somebody drops the class and you're the first on the wait list, it would put you in. Remember that the wait list only runs for the first five days of class. So if you aren't in in the first five days, you're not going to get in without extra help. Step three of four, I love how they have so many steps. <laughs> will ask you if you want to enroll or add it to the shopping cart. You cannot enroll in classes until your enrollment date has arrived. So say you have an enrollment date of November 12th at 10 o'clock. If you try to enroll November 12th at nine o'clock, it will not let you enroll. So until your enrollment date's here, you would just add it to the shopping cart, then choose next. Then you would review everything and if it all looks good, you want to hit submit. And here you can, oh, classes have been added to your shopping cart. And you have the option of doing what we call validating your shopping cart. And I highly recommend that you do this because you would click on shopping cart, circle next to, select the circle next to open, and then you would click validate. And when you validate your shopping cart, if there's any issues with any of the classes that you've chose to enroll in, say for instance, you accidentally picked a, a class that's offered on the Vancouver campus, 
it will say, it will give you a message that lets you know you're not able to enroll in that class. Or say if you have prerequisites that you have not met. For instance, if you're trying to enroll in Math 171 and you haven't come, um, finished, if you haven't been enrolled in 106, 108, it won't let you enroll. My WSU does assume success. So if you are in Math 106, 108 right now in this semester, you can put 171 in your shopping cart and validate it. And as long as you get the C or better, you're gonna be able to enroll in that course in the fall. WSU is going to assume that you're going to be successful, just like Julie and I assume you're going to be successful in classes when we're advising. If you're not, you need to be reaching out to us. So that, that says class validation is complete. Now it's on shopping cart. Select course and oh, and then if you're once you grab the shopping cart all ready to go and your enrollment date has arrived, your enrollment date and time, it's very specific that you need to know what date and what time because it's set up so that they allow students only a certain amount of students to enroll um, at a time to keep from overloading the MyWSU system. So once your enrollment date time has arrived, say your time is 1210 on November 12th and you are in class at 1210 on November 12th, but you get out at one o'clock, then you can enroll at one o'clock or you can enroll the, the day before classes if you want also. I highly discourage you from waiting that long as some classes are hard to get into. But once you have your shopping cart verified or validated and your enrollment date comes, you just go to the shopping cart, click enroll, Oops, and you're enrolled. <laughs> There's lots and lots of how to's, how do I do it, um, FAQs for students, lots of that information. You can use the WSU website just like Google. Go to the WSU main page and type something in and you're gonna find, just like Google, lots of answers. These are all on the registrar's website, which is registrar.wsu.edu. But they have videos on how to drop a class, swap a class, which you can only do up to the 30th day of class, view your position on the wait list, view or order transcripts, change a credit or instructor for variable credits, view your grades, find, uh, nobody uses abbreviation for schedule anymore. Uh, it actually has, what does it mean when you get an error message, like outside of career? Outside of career is one that I hate that message, because usually what it means is you are trying to enroll in a course on another campus. That doesn't make sense outside of career, but that's what it is. But anyway, the registrar's office, registrar.wsu.edu, has lots of information on their website. And also, make sure that you're utilizing our website, sdc.wsu.edu. You can find so many answers to your questions if you just go to our website, sdc.wsu.edu, for your advising plans, how to plan for the future, links to anything that we have going on. There, that is a really great website that Jamie maintains in a very, very professional way. Speaking of professional, email etiquette. We are all communicating all the time by email now, and it's pretty important that for now and in your future career that when you're using email, you're doing it professionally and you're using it to the ability that you need to be using it, not just, hey, what do you, what's up? Schedule an appointment for me. You need to be making professional emails and making sure that you're communicating what you want. Sometimes when we're emailing, we can have a tone that's not really what we want to be expressing. So just Go to this link and look at this YouTube video on email etiquette. It's something that we all need to be aware of, especially in this virtual reality that we're now living in. <laughs> Here's some more helpful resources. There's that wonderful website, sdc.wsu.edu. And under that, you can also find the student resources page, which is just student resources after sdc.wsu.edu. And also the Academic Career and Success Center, ASCC.wsu.edu. They have links to tutor.
looks like Treva kind of just froze up for a second. So <laughs> I'll take over. She'll probably come right back on here in a second. But the ASCC has tutoring. They have, they can help with um, career planning. So it's a great resource. If you just have questions, you can go to their website. They have great resources for students. And so then the last thing we have is what questions do you have for us? <laughs> 